G'day folks, it's Cortez Arino, and today I'm going to show you how to build this villager trading hall inside of a small Japanese house. So the main point of this is obviously to have a very cool looking building, but also add a little bit of functionality. And we are using a lot of the new blocks in this build, so it's got a very cool and unusual roof. And I've built it backing onto a wall, and the point of this is it gives the house a TARDIS effect. So it's a lot larger on the inside than you would think. And uh, yeah, we can fit seven villages in here, so it's not super huge. It wouldn't be great for your main trading hall, but maybe you could fill it up with masons or farmers. And it would be a nice little trading center. And if you were thinking, well, I don't actually want a trading hall, I just liked the look of the house. Well, never fear, because I'll be doing a tutorial for two different versions of this. So we've got the one backing onto the wall with the villagers inside, and then we've got a completely freestanding version that is just to look good. But I will not be doing an interior for the freestanding one. And seeing as the only difference between these two houses is the back wall and the interior, we're going to leave that till right at the end and I'll let you know when we're going to split up and build the two different houses so you can follow the tutorial for the one you want to build. Okay, let's get started. To begin with, you want to build a rectangle that is 17 blocks by 9 blocks. And you're going to build it mostly out of stone, but I want you to mix in a few stone bricks and a few blocks of andesite. And we're also going to put some jack-o'-lanterns in those spots you can see right there. And once you've done that, I want you to grab your stone bricks and just randomly place about 8 or 10 of them just around the floor completely randomly. Then do the exact same thing with your andesite, about 10 of those just randomly around the floor, and then fill in the rest with stone. Okay, once you've done that, I want you to grab some light grey carpet and just place one of those on top of each of your jack o' lanterns. The next step is to grab some stripped dark oak logs, and we're going to put two in the corners like that. And go ahead and do that in all four corners. And once you've done that, build them all up four blocks tall in total. Okay, so choose which of the longer sides is going to be your front entrance and come over to this log here. And what we're going to do is counting from this, we're going to skip three blocks and then place a log right there. And we'll do the same from this side. One, two, three, and place a log on the fourth. And then we're going to make these four blocks tall and then put a crossbeam in between them. Then come along to your shorter sides and right in the middle we're going to skip that first block, place our log on the second, and this one is going to be seven blocks tall. And we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side. And once you've done that, grab some stone stairs and we're going to run these all the way around the building except for the back wall. Just leave that bare for the moment but run your stairs around the other three sides. Okay, now we're going to do our front door. So looking at this little archway here, we're going to put upside down spruce stairs in the corners and then run some spruce slabs across like that and grab spruce fences. We'll put three there and three there. Now we're going to need some sea lanterns. Against this log, we're going to put three and against that log, we're going to put three. Then go back to your spruce stairs. We'll put one upside down there, one upside down there, then a spruce trapdoor in the middle. And then just on the sides here, we're going to flick up two spruce trapdoors. Then come to the inside against these sea lens. We're going to use our spruce trapdoors again. So this will add lighting to the inside of our building. And on the outside here, you've got a choice. So you could use spruce trapdoors again. So if you're just making this more of a simple house, I think the spruce trapdoors look really good. But if you want to make it look a little bit fancier, you can use the warped trapdoors. 
And that's the decision I went for. I'm using the warped ones, but if you think that's a bit much, you can always use spruce. And now we're going to do the windows on each side of our door, and they are exactly the same on both sides. So I've done that one, we'll do this one together. You want to grab bone blocks and put one, two, three lying on their side right there, and then up the top of the log, another three right there. Then grab spruce stairs, place them upside down, then three spruce trapdoors along there. And then this is optional, sometimes I put it in, sometimes I don't. Three fences right there, so maybe you like it without the fences, you could leave them out. Then you can come to the inside of our window, and we're going to put two acacia trapdoors there, flick them up, and two up the top. Now if you're putting villagers in here, and there are mobs around outside, then go ahead and put a third window in like that. It's, uh, it's completely up to you. I think it looks better with two, but if you need to keep your villagers safe, you can put three. Okay, come around to the left hand side and with bone blocks we're going to put two lying on their side there and another two and then up the top of the logs we'll put more bone blocks right there. Now with spruce stairs we'll put one upside down on each side and one in the middle with spruce trapdoors up there. Then we'll grab a spruce fence and we'll just put one there and one there. Now back to your spruce stairs. We're just going to put a little window ledge underneath each window, just placing them upside down. And we'll put two flower pots down, and I'll put a lily in that one, and an orchid in that one. Then you can come around to the inside, and with our acacia trapdoors, we will put our windows in. And that's how it should look from the outside when you're done. Now for the same wall on the other side, it is exactly the same, so go ahead and build that. Uh, but we'll change up the flower pots here, I'll just put one flower on this side. Okay, so now we're going to start building up the roof, and this is exactly the same on both sides. So I'll show you one side and you can copy it to the other. So the first thing you want to do is looking from the inside here, we're going to place a double chest on top of the bone blocks on each side like that. And then you can grab a warped fence and we're going to place it on the log just above our chest. Now swing around here and we're going to put a warped slab on top of that log and then another one right there. And then just behind it we're going to grab warped planks and put two in like that and we'll do the same on this side so a warped slab another one behind it and then two warped planks now in between the planks here just to cover up those chests we're going to wrap, run a stripped dark oak log across the front and then grab some spruce trapdoors we'll put one in the middle and then on the planks we're going to put one on each side just like that and then we'll grab two spruce fences and put them up in the middle. Now next to that fence we're going to put a warped plank on each side, then grab some warped stairs and we'll go one, two, and on this side one, two, and then finished with a warped plank just on top of the fence like so. And now we're going to start adding in some blackstone. And once again, this is exactly the same on both sides. So I'll show you one and you can copy it to the other. So we're going to begin by just holding shift and placing a blackstone stair like that on top of the trapdoor. And we'll do the same on that side. And then what we're going to do is go upside down stair, right way up, upside down and right way up. And we'll do that on this side as well. So upside down, right way up, upside down, and right way up. Now where they, they meet in the middle here, against that plank, we're going to put upside down stairs like so. And then swing around to this side, and on top of that stair, we'll put a right way up one. Now we are going to switch to polished blackstone brick slabs. And we're going to have three coming down the angle. So first, hold shift. Place it against the spruce trapdoor. That's your first one. And then we'll have to place temporary blocks. So I'll place temporary one there, one in front, and break it. 
There's our second, and then we'll do two temporary ones, one out to the front, and break that. And there is our third slab. So do the same over here. One against the trapdoor, one there, and a third one, just like that. So go ahead and build that on the other side. Okay, so now that's done, I want you to come along to the very last blackstone slab. And we're just going to run that all the way along until it connects in front. Now come along to this first uh, warped wood slab here. And we're just going to run that all the way along as well until it connects to the other side. And I didn't mention this before, but it's a good idea to mix in a little bit of dark prismarine in with your warped wood. It just adds a little bit of detail. So if you've got it, definitely throw it in. So once you've got those two lines of slabs, I want you to grab some warped trapdoors and we're going to place these against the warped slabs and just run them all the way along like so. And it's really nice. You've got an eve of a house that the sun can actually shine through. It looks really good. So we've done it at the back. We are going to come over to the front here and do the exact same thing. Okay, so now we're just going to build up the rest of the roof with our warped wood. So where we've got the planks right there, go ahead and remembering to mix in the odd dark prismarine, just run them all the way along and you'll do the exact same thing on this side, run it to the end. And then we've got two lines of stairs here, just continue building them all the way along. And then up the top, we've got planks, just build that all the way along as well. So just continue doing this until your roof is all filled in. And you should be looking something like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to decorate the roof, but we're also going to spawn proof it. So grab some warped trapdoors and place one right there. And what we're going to do is just place one every second block all the way across the top. And I've already filled it in, but do the same thing on the other side with our trapdoors. Then looking from the side, in the same spots, we're going to place trapdoors on top. So just run them all the way along, and then that's a spawnable space in the middle. So grab a warped pressure plate, and we're going to pop one on each of these all the way along. Now grab some buttons, and be careful not to press these buttons, because you could trigger some of these trapdoors down here, but we're just going to place a button on every spot where we're able to place one. So on the black stone there, I'll put a button and then we'll run these all the way along to the other side. And I'll remember to put that other black stone button right there and then grab some warped buttons and we're going to run a line of them all the way along here. And that is all the spawn proofing done on that side. So go ahead and repeat the buttons on this side. All right guys, this is the part of the tutorial where we're going to split off and build the two different designs. So I will do the freestanding one first because this is the fastest and then we will move on to the villager trading hall. Okay, so come along to the empty back wall and against this log right here, we're going to go one, two, three bone blocks lying on their sides and then four stripped dark oak facing straight up. And we'll do the same from this side. So one, two, three bone blocks, and then one, two, three, four stripped dark oak logs. And we can also add the bone blocks up the top. So we'll do three across there and three across there. Now grab your stripped dark oak logs and we're going to run five of them across the very top like so and then we'll go three sea lanterns on each side and then back to bone blocks we'll put three along the bottom so pretty easy so far now we're going to grab some spruce stairs we'll put one upside down against the tops of each of our logs that are facing straight up so those four right there and then underneath all of them, we will put our spruce fences. And then we'll grab some spruce slabs. And just at the top of the bone blocks there, we're going to run them along there. And then just continue all the way along like so. Okay, so grab some spruce trapdoors. And against our sea lens here, 
We're just going to place three on each side and then grab your acacia trapdoors and we're going to place two on each side of the window just to look like open shutters. Now you'll have to come around here into the front door and once again against the C lens in here we are going to place our spruce trapdoors and you don't actually need any more light in here. Nothing is going to spawn. The lights behind our trapdoors is enough to stop all the mobs. Now for the final two windows on each side, we're just going to fill these up with our acacia trapdoors and just make sure you're standing on the inside of the building when you place it. And that, guys, is the freestanding version of this house. 100% complete. And I spoke too soon. We forgot one tiny thing. This line of the stone stairs, what you can do is just finish this off and run that all the way around the back. And then you're done. Okay, now we will do the tutorial for turning this house into a villager trading hall. So come along to your empty back wall, grab a stripped dark oak log, and in this gap between the two logs, we're just going to place one facing straight up right there. And then what we're going to do is skip every second block and place a log facing straight up. And now we're going to build all of these up until they are four blocks tall. Okay, so looking from the same direction that I'm looking now, we are going to place spruce trapdoors on the gap between our logs and we're going to flick all of them up. So when you come onto the inside of the building, that's how they should look. Now directly in front of those trapdoors, we're going to place our workstations. So depending on what you want your villagers to be trading, I want mine to be librarian, so I'm going to place lecterns. Now also grab some chests and in the gaps between our logs up there, right at the top, just place a chest in there and you can still open that up because it's a slab above its head. And then hold shift and place trapdoors, spruce trapdoors underneath. Okay, so now we're going to do a little trick in the floor that stops the villager from seeing any other workstations that are around the place. All they'll be able to see is the lectern in front of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig out all the blocks around our lecterns and then we're going to dig it down one more layer. So we're going two blocks deep in total. And I'm just going to put some jack-o'-lanterns in there for light blocks. You won't need this much light, so you can be more sparing than I'm being, but I'm just going to place all jack-o'-lanterns down there. Then on top of the jack-o'-lanterns, we are going to place any coloured carpet at all, because we're not going to see this. But then after that, on top of that carpet, we're going to put a second layer of carpet. And this is light grey carpet. So... The villagers will think they can't pathfind past that, so they will only see that lectern directly in front of them. Okay, let's decorate the inside of this house with, uh, with some equipment, so it's going to be nice and functional. So we're going to need anvils. I'm going to put three in front of that window and three in front of that window. I'll put a grindstone right there and an ender chest on that side. Now what I'm going to do... It's going to knock out these bottom two spruce trapdoors and I'm going to place a barrel in there on each side and then we're going to put a little gate in here to stop mobs from running in so I'm just going to put a fence connecting to each side of the barrel and a fence gate in the middle and if uh, if the area outside is completely spawn proof then you won't need to worry about that but if it isn't put the fence in and also Put in that extra window. Okay, so now we're going to build this wall that runs along the back of the house. And it doesn't really matter where your house connects to the wall. You can see I've got this pattern of fences and then the bit of terracotta sticking up. If, uh, like you can see, my house is connecting right where the terracotta is. If it connects to a bit of fence, it doesn't matter. You can put it wherever you like. So, Let's come along to the back here and the pattern for the wall is having three quartz bricks in a row with a quartz block 
on each side and then you just continue that so three bricks and then a quartz block so go ahead and build that as long as you want and make sure you're building it right up against the edge of the house right there so once you've got that first line of quartz we're going to do the exact same thing but we're going to place the quartz blocks in different spots so just place it above that center quartz brick like so just leaving three block gaps in between and then once you've done that grab your quartz bricks and fill in the rest and after you've done the two lines of quartz grab some red terracotta and just run a single layer of it all the way along and then what we're going to do is we're going to place a terracotta sticking straight up three dark oak fences and then another terracotta and just continue that all the way along okay now i want you to grab some blackstone bricks and we're going to be running a long line of them across the top of the fence and every now and then grab a polished blackstone and mix it in just for a bit of extra detail but it's going to be a little bit tricky here we're going to be going under the eave of the house and that will cover up the backs of all our chests and so just keep placing these all the way to the end and now we're going to grab some blackstone brick slabs and we're going to be placing these against the bottom half of the blackstone we just placed and of course every now and then mix in a polished blackstone slab so run it all the way along here until it connects to the house when you get to the ends of your fence just turn it around in the corner and then this is the interesting bit we've got the eave of the house coming down just add your slabs to the bottom of that so that is how it will be looking guys so just run that all the way along until you've finished so this is how you should be looking when you're done guys so the final thing to do is grab your blackstone buttons and spawn proof the top of the wall and you're probably thinking how on earth am i going to get my villagers in there easily well what you want to do is just on the other side of your wall have a little enclosed area for breeding villagers. You'll want something a bit better than a fence so the zombies can't get to them. But then what you can do is you just punch holes in the walls where those villager stations are and you can have a fence gate in there. So once you breed up a whole bunch of adult villagers then you can just come to the inside here and as soon as you open that fence gate, one of them will lock on to the workstation and he'll walk in here by, all by himself. And then you can close the fence gate behind him and plug up your wall. And if you don't like him, you can kill him and bring another guy in. And then once you're done, you just get rid of that temporary breeding place out the back. And that's it guys, we are all done. That was two tutorials in one. A tutorial for a nice little freestanding house and a nice little villager training hall. So thanks for watching, I'm Cortezarino. I'll see you later.